what is a computer network? Well, to me, a computer network is two or more computers that communicate with each other. And what do they communicate? Data. It's that simple. Take a look at this network diagram. I use the term computers loosely. It could be any system or device that has an IP address and can communicate on the network. Any host, per se. As you can see in the figure, we have lots of different computer systems. We look here, we have PCs, we have laptops, mobile devices. Over here, we have a switch that connects everything together. We have a wireless access point for our mobile devices. We have a router or gateway device, if you will, a firewall, and then that connects out to the internet. We also have some servers here and a printer. So this is a typical local area network or LAN. Now, all of these systems are just moving data back and forth. That's what they do. So it's all about the data. Chances are you use systems within a computer network every day. This video is about connecting Linux systems together in a computer network. But we need a tool to allow us to do that. Enter in TCP IP. So TCP IP is a suite of protocols used by computers to communicate with each other. It includes the TCP and IP protocols, but also many others, including HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, Secure FTP, POP3 for the uh, receiving of email, SMTP for sending email, DNS for resolving domain names and host names to IP addresses, and DHCP for handing out IP addresses automatically on a network. But there's many more. Let's look at our network diagram again. In this case, we've added some IP addresses. IP addresses are used by each computer that runs TCP IP to identify them and to facilitate the communication of packets of data. So over here we have a PC and it is on the IP address 192.168.1.73. And then we have another PC over here. Its IP address is 192.168.1.142. So it stands to reason that the network that we are operating on here is 192.168.1.0. Dot zero. That's the entire network. And each host on the network gets an individual IP address, which is shown by that last octet, that last number. This one over here is dot 73. This one over here is dot 142. And over here we have our gateway device. And this one is dot one. So again, IP addresses are used by each computer that runs TCP IP to identify them and to facilitate the communication of the packets of data. Now, one other important topic here is the difference between static and dynamic addresses. Static IP addresses are manually assigned. A person actually does it manually step by step. Dynamic IP addresses are automatically assigned by a server. So it's important to know the difference between these. And so if we look at the different systems that we have here, you will have statically assigned addresses on devices that don't exist in too many great numbers. So more individual devices like a gateway or a switch or firewall or perhaps servers, these will get statically assigned or manually assigned IP addresses. We actually type in the IP address for these devices. And that makes sense because we want them to have a specific IP and we want to be sure that it never changes in most cases. But that doesn't make any sense for all of the many clients that are out there. A typical company will have 
tens or hundreds of mobile devices and PCs and laptops and so on. So these should obtain their IP addresses automatically from some type of DHCP server. That DHCP server could be in our switch or in our router or wireless access point, or it could be an actual server. We might have a DHCP server in here somewhere in our server rack, whether this is on premises or virtual or in the cloud or who knows what. But the idea, regardless of where that DHCP server is, is that the clients automatically obtain their IP addresses from that DHCP server. This way we don't have to go to every single client to manually assign an IP. They get those IP addresses automatically when they first boot. When they first boot, they broadcast out to the network and try to find that DHCP server wherever it exists. And then they negotiate for an IP address. It all happens automatically as long as you've programmed the DHCP server properly. Now let's get into the lab for this video. Here's what's on the agenda. We're going to show the IP addresses of two different Linux systems using the IPA command. And so I have two systems here. I have a server, quote unquote, and that's gonna use the IP address 10.0.2.51. And in fact, the server I'm gonna show already has that set up. And then we have a client, which is using 10.0.2.52. For the server, I'm using Debian Linux as a server. And for the client, I'm using Debian as a client using a desktop environment. So we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna show the relationship between the IP address and the net mask or the subnet mask, which helps to define which portion of the IP address is the network portion and which portion is the host portion. And finally, we'll use the ping command to connect from one system to another and test whether the other system is alive on the network. Okay, we'll start at the server. I'm connected as the root account. This is the super user with full administrative privileges on a server. Now, when you install Debian server, you install it as command line only with no desktop. And so this is an example of that. And usually we'll just work in that server as root. You might create another administrative account as well, but I'm gonna work in root here. And we're going to type the IPA command. So IPA is actually short for IP address show. You could reduce that down to IP address or just down to IPA. Either way, it's going to give you the same results. When we press enter, it shows the network interfaces on this system. This will work on just about any Linux system. So first off, we see the loopback adapter. I'm not really interested in that. That's assigned to every system that runs TCP IP. And it's 127.0.0.1, regardless of what system you're working on. What I'm interested in is the real network interface. For this system, it's ENS3. That's the network interface on here. And what I want to see is the IP address, which is denoted by INET. And it shows 10.0.2.51 slash 24. That is the IP address for this particular system. So let's break that down a little bit. 10.0.2.51 slash 24. So the question is, what portion of the IP address is the network portion and what portion is the host portion, which helps identify it on the network? Well, right off the bat, I'm going to say that the network is 10.0.2 and the host portion is the last octet, in this case, .51. How do I know? The slash 24 tells us. Slash 24 is an example of CIDR notation. And slash 24, if we bring this down here, can be converted to a decimal number, and that shows us the net mask or the subnet mask. 24 means the same thing as 255.255.255.255.255.
How do we know? Well, what happens here? When we work with this number, this is a decimal number. But if we convert this to binary, we can convert that number over. 255 becomes 1111, 1111 in binary, eight ones. And again, 255, 1111, 1111. And again, 255, 1111, 1111. And zero in binary becomes just 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So what do we have here? We have a group of ones, which are known as masked bits, and a group of zeros, which are unmasked bits. Here's essentially how it works. The ones tell us the network portion. They are masked. And so that tells us the network portion. The zeros tell us the host portion. They are unmasked bits. So we can break this down in this manner. If we count all the ones together, we will get 24 masked bits. And that's what we got here, 24. It's a slash 24 network. That means that the first three octets are the network portion. That's the first three octets here, 10.0.2. The zeros, they are the unmasked portion or the host portion, and there's eight of those. Not really too important, but that can help us to figure out how many IP addresses we can have on the network. It would actually be 254 usable IP addresses. But I'll show that in some other video somewhere else. For now, what we're trying to show is that slash 24 will tell you exactly what the subnet mask is. So slash 24 is triple 255.0. And that in turn in binary is 24 ones and eight zeros. So therefore slash 24. So that's how we figure that out. So we know that our network portion here, our network portion is 10.0.2 and the host portion is dot 51. Any other hosts on this network will use that last octet to differentiate themselves, dot 52, dot 53, whatever. Now let's jump over to my Debian client system, which has a desktop. And we'll open up a terminal here. Now you can open up the terminal in Debian by just hitting the super user key or Windows key and typing in the search terminal. You can also find it in a variety of other places. You can also add a shortcut key to it, which I always use. I use Control-Alt-T, shortcut to the terminal. So there we go, that brings up the terminal. And in this system, I'm connected as Dave at PT1. So name of the computer is PT1. My user account is Dave. Let's run that same command that we ran before, IPA, and see what we see. Okay, first of all, local loopback, not really interested in that. We already mentioned every system running TCP IP gets a local loopback address for internal testing, and it's 127.0.0.1, no matter what computer you're on. What I'm interested in is the main network interface. Now this could differ depending on what Linux distro you're using, what virtualization platform you're using, what type of hardware you're using, and so on. In this case, I'm ENP1S0. That's my network interface. And the IP address, 10.0.2.52. Once again, slash 24. So it's a triple 255 net mask. We're on the same network, 10.0.2, but this time we're just incremented by one. The IP address is dot 52. So this system's on the same network as the Debian server. It stands to reason that we should be able to connect to that Debian server. And to test that, we can use the ping command and connect to the IP address of that server. 10.0.2.51, press enter, and we get replies. I'm gonna press control C to break out of this loop. Otherwise it'll continuously ping, but you can see here we're getting replies. 64 bytes from the server, dot 51. And it took this long to get that reply. There you go, we have connectivity. 
if you can go one way, you can probably go the other way. So if we go to the server here and do a ping on the other system, 10.0.2.52, we will get replies in that manner, the same manner that we just showed. Control C to break out of there. So both systems are working. TCP IP is functioning. And we set up an IP address previously by manually configuring it. Now that's going to be different depending on what Linux distro you're running. But just real quick, for example, in a Debian server, a true Debian server, you would edit this particular file here. The interfaces file within slash etc slash network. And if we look in there, you'll see the IP address here. 10.0.2.51. And I manually configured that previously. So this is a static IP address, as you can see right here, just like we talked about before. In future videos, we'll show additional configurations and also how to set up DHCP servers and all kinds of other good stuff. And of course, obtain IP addresses automatically, which is what a client normally does. That's not the case here on this particular system, uh, but we could easily do so. And you could do that in the terminal or in the GUI in settings. But for now, that's about it. We ended up showing both systems, showing the IP addresses with the IPA command, defining the network portion of the IP address and the host portion, which differentiates it from other systems. And then we used ping to connect between the two systems and to prove that we have that connectivity. Hope you enjoyed it. That's it for this video.